Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well and staying safe out there. And if you're new here, my name is Jim. It's great to meet you. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, I make tutorial videos here on YouTube showing how to use software products to edit your images. I'm often looking at creative techniques and just having fun exploring my creative vision in a photo using a software. And today I'm in Luminar 4 and I'm working on a photo from my Iceland trip earlier this year. It was the Luminar Photo Camp with the Skyloom Luminar team. It was fantastic. We had some amazing pros, some amazing guests on the tour, and it was just fantastic. So one of the things we did is we went to an ice cave and caught sunrise, and it was fantastic. But an ice cave, you've got all this kind of darker area, and then you've got uh, at the hole at the end, the sunlight or sunrise coming through. And you have this huge disparity in light where it's darker on the inside and this bright source of light. So I was firing brackets on a tripod and what I wanted to do is basically take the photo and kind of blend it together using an exposure blending, which I've been doing some videos about recently. But I also shot brackets because the huge disparity in light. However, I didn't really want to make an HDR. There's plenty of detail in my single exposures and I didn't feel like I needed HDR to really make it uh, come to life, so to speak. But I found a nice little tip or trick that I was playing with that worked really well in this photo. So let me show you the before. Here's the before and then here's the after. And this is using a single exposure and doing an exposure blend. And I'm gonna hit reset. I'll show you how I did this. There's one little tip that really made the difference. Let's get into it. Okay, so here's my base photo. Now let me show you, I shot a three exposure bracket. This was the brightest one. I like this one because I like the, the light value, if you will, in the, um, well, we're basically underneath neath a glacier. So I like the light value there. I also like the little bit smoother water from the longer exposure. There's my medium one, and then here's my darkest one. Now, what I like about this one is the sky. So what I really want is that sky on the other, on the brighter photo. So instead of, you know, doing an exposure, or excuse me, an HDR merge and putting all three together, I wanna to take that sky and stick it, I gotta scoot over to, um, on that photo. So the way you do that is with an exposure blend. Now, the first thing I did prior to recording this is I took that darker photo that had the better sky in it and I exported that. So I exported that darker photo, I have it on my desktop, and that allows me to access it. Unfortunately, you can't pull a photo from within the Luminar library and use it as an image layer in the Luminar library. So I hope that that changes in the future, but regardless, I have my base photo, and the first thing I do is I wanna add a new image layer. So go to the Layers panel, say plus, add new image layer, and here we go, my handy little image pops up, and I'm gonna say open, and that's gonna drop that image layer on top of the other one. And it lines up perfectly, of course, because it was shot on a tripod. And that is something I recommend for this technique because Luminar does not auto align layers. But um, because it's shot on a tripod, it's basically already aligned. I've now got that great looking sky on top of my base image, right? There's my base image and there's this image. Now, currently this is 100% opacity laying on top of it. And what you may be inclined to do is go get a masking brush and paint it in, but it's very difficult to be super precise with that. So instead, I'm gonna add this layer with a luminosity mask. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And there we go, it's laid that other sky on the base image. Now, if you're not familiar with luminosity masks, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here, but basically, it's a mask that's automatically generated with that tool, and it applies uh, the mask based on luminosity or light values or brightness levels. And so knowing that on my base image, which looks like this, that the really bright area is the sky, I knew that if I used a luminosity mask, it would take the other sky and primarily apply it to that area. So if you, let me just zoom in, that'll be easier. If you look at the sky here, let me show you, there's the before and there's the after. Really no other impact across the photo before and after. So I've been able to lay in that darker sky on top of this. So I'm gonna go into brush so that I can show you the luminosity mask in place. You will see very heavily masked in that bright area, a little bit lighter across there, and then there's some up here. If you don't want it up there, you just click on erase, and you come in here and you can remove it. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do because 
I like the way the, the ice looks uh, up here, and I don't want any of that luminosity mask being applied to it. I'm actually gonna remove it from the snow over here as well, and the rest of it I'm gonna leave. So basically, I've now got a luminosity mask primarily hitting that piece of sky that was blown out, um, and um, that's about all it's hitting, plus a little bit of that distant um, landscape and a little bit of that water. The rest of that's totally fine. I'm gonna say okay and done. So I've basically added the new sky um, with a luminosity mask using the exposure blend technique and uh, I've put it on top of the base image. So I've got a wonderfully exposed base image and a wonderfully ex exposed sky blended together perfectly with a luminosity mask. It's a fabulous tip and a fabulous trip uh, trick. It works so well on images like this. We have perhaps, uh, not perhaps, we have shot brackets, or at the very least exposed one for the inside of the cave in this case, and one for the sky. So it's something to think about. Now, um, I've done all that. Now I'm gonna go adjust the photo. I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer, and I'm gonna get over here into the tools. I've gotta look at my notes to see what I did, but I'm gonna go through and finalize the look of this photo. Uh, but stay with me, I've got one more tip I'm gonna use at the end of this. So first I'm gonna go into light, I'm gonna give it some smart contrast. I'm gonna go to, I went to 58 there. I'm also gonna take highlights down. They're still a little bit bright, so I'm gonna take that down to 47 and I'm gonna lift shadows to about 52 or so. So again, just these are refinement touches. I'm just basically balancing out the image I use AI Accent next, and I go to 42 on that. And keep in mind, this is a new adjustment layer. It's sitting on top, so it's adjusting everything. It's a global adjustment across the entire photo, which is fine because I've, I've used the base image and the new image layer to create my new uh, blended photo, and I'm on top of that, so everything I'm doing is global, affecting that combined image. Uh, next up is structure, where I'm gonna go to about 42 as well. And that's gonna give me some nice pop of detail in all that, uh, that iceberg or glacier. We're basically in an ice cave, so it's underneath a glacier, so I'm not sure what to call it. I'll call it a glacier, I guess. But basically, that cave is, um, it's got a lot of detail in it, and I think it looks really cool. So I'm gonna give a vibrance bump of about 13. This is giving a little bit of kick, um, and I don't wanna overdo the saturation because there's a lot of blue in the photo which you can control down here in advanced settings if you want to. I think it looks fine like that, and in fact, that's to me how I remember it looking. I just wanted to bump up the vibrance just a little bit. Um, next, I'm gonna go to Landscape Enhancer and get Golden Hour and go to about 45, and that's gonna pop those warmer tones. And that's really where I was at first. Base image, blended image with some adjustments. I was really happy, but you know, one of the things I noticed is it's still a little bit washed out here. And so this is the other tip I was talking about. I went and added a new adjustment layer. And in this case, I'm gonna get myself a radial mask because that's a circular or oval shaped mask. So I'm gonna draw that over here and I gotta fix the size and the shape. So I'm just kind of um, playing here until I get it just how I want it. Let's see here. Something about, uh, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna pull this back and I'm gonna tilt it a little bit. All I'm trying to do is isolate that area and a, uh, a radial mask is great for that. Something, I'm still kind of refining this. So something about like that. However, a radial mask by default will impact the area outside of the shape that you just drew. So you need to hit invert if you wanna impact the inside of that. So that's what I just did. I'm gonna say done, and now I'm gonna go over to my tools, and I'm just gonna to go to the light tool, and what I'm gonna do is take the exposure down, like a negative one and change, so something about like that. You can see I'm basically darkening that area, which is what I was trying to do because it was a little too bright. I'm gonna add uh, some contrast again, so like a 62 or 63 there, and I'm gonna pull down the highlights a little bit, like a negative 30 is about what I had. So something about like that. So let me show you what this adjustment layer with the radial mask did. I'm gonna turn that off if I can hit the button. So there's before, brighter. Um, you know, the sky blended well, but it's still a little too bright and not quite balanced enough for me. And 
With this layer turned on, you can see it looks a lot better. So one more time, before and after. Uh, that radial mask is, has just given me more control over that specific little area. And because it's a little bit of an oval shape, I thought a radial mask would work great here. You could also brush mask or something like that, but that was a combination of new image layer with a luminosity mask to isolate that sky and pull in the darker sky into the brighter photo. Then some editing, uh, some basic adjustments on an adjustment layer. And then one more adjustment layer with the radial mask to isolate that area and control the light there. And that's my finished photo, my friends. Let me get over here and let's show you the before and the after. And let me show you this sliding uh, window here, especially if you pay attention to that area where the, uh, the hole at the end of the ice cave and the sun rises peeking through it just looks so much better i think and it's much more balanced now you could go from here you can control colors and do different things i like it that like this it's fairly colorful but i remember it being a very vibrant scene because that light came through and was as gorgeous and the blue in the uh in the glacier was fabulous as well that was my technique and tip using a luminosity mask to do an exposure blend and bring in that sky and then of course the radial mask as i said helped me finally tune it and control it at the end. And that's it, my friends, one last time before and after. That covers it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're having a great day. If you have comments, feel free to leave them down below. Like, share, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you soon, my friends. Take care and adios.